we are inside Archicad and we're going to take a look at Academy's cabinets and first thing really to look at is we have the Academy's menu if we have a look in here you'll see cabinets is listed but all that's actually under there is the, the help function so cabinets is not a menu driven tool it's actually driven from its own separate item in the toolbox you can see we have a, a cabinet tool now available it behaves very much like an object tool but it specifically features Academy's cabinets so here you can see I'm looking at the standard setup. We have four objects that make up Academy's cabinets. We have the main cabinet tool itself. We have the cabinets doors and drawer faces. These are quite useful, we'll come on to these. We have the end panels and we also have the Pelmet object. So I'll come back and take a brief look at these shortly. First thing I was going to do was just show you some examples of various cabinets made to represent different features and functions. So here is a, a kitchen plan that's been put together. In 2D, there's not really much to look at because 2D cabinets could really just be a bunch of 2D lines, I suppose. But if we take a look at 3D, it's a little bit more obvious what's going on. Here you can see a little bit more clearly what's going on. We have a number of cabinets to represent wall hung units, floor place units, and then we have the taller units across here to the side as well. There's a mix of different types of doors from bottom hung to represent a possibly a dishwasher. We have traditional side hung, we then have double hinged corner units and we also have some drawer units placed in here as well. If we take another quick look at a different example, again 2D, now we can take a look in 3D and see exactly what's what. This is a good example to look at, you can see we have one of the corner units that's been placed, the, the end cabinet, and if we take a quick look at the settings, you can see we have a number of options for shape, we can have just a solid end piece, we can have just a rectangular panel, bull nose or a bull nose with shelves. And then we can set the various different things like location if it's freestanding against the wall and then the various different sizes to match the other units that are already in place. We then have controls over the shelves, the plinth, the plinth details and then we have more options for things like the counter, what type of nosing is applied to it, what the various sizes are, what edges it's applied to. And then again we've got full control over things like the surfaces, the appearance and the label properties. So that's quite a nice unit just for finishing off the end of a run of cabinets. If I take a look at the wall hung units, these are just based on the standard cabinet and there's a whole host of options for setting out the overall shape of the unit, so rectangular. We can go with just the cabinet front, so maybe we're building it into some sort of existing structure, maybe if it was a, a wardrobe unit rather than a kitchen unit we might be building it into existing walls etc. In that case we can use the cabinet front and it will build the shelves and the structure and whatever else is required in there. We also have options for internal and external corners depending on what shape that are required. There's tons of further options for things like the set out, the drawers, the walls, the shelves, the base and the plinth, all the controls that you'd expect to see to be able to build these cabinets in greater detail than the standard cabinets that are available in standard Archicad. So I won't go through the rest of them, it gives you an idea of just how much detail is actually available within this particular object. There are other little embellishments I've used, I've used the, the plinth object across the base here and I've also set some lights inside the, the kickboards underneath these units here. These are just to again add a bit more detail to what's actually going on here. So that's just the standard lamp tool in Archicad. Got one final kitchen example and I've gone with particularly striking colours here just to, to show <laughs> exactly what's going on with it. I'm going to come on and have a look at the different door styles and the handle styles you can also apply to these just to give you again a taster of what's possible with it. But um, one of the things I wanted to do was just let's grab all the cabinets. Now because these are cabinets I can use select all with the cabinet tool and know that I'm only picking up cabinets. So the sink and the tap those are objects. The covering that I've applied to the walls to give me the tiles those are also objects, but because they're a separate tool, I've quite easily selected all the cabinets and don't have to worry about anything else. So what I wanted to do was just take a quick look at the set out of the cabinets, because we have a number of options in here. So the sort of standard out the box Archicad pretty much works with this surface mount directly onto carcass. So if I click that and hit OK, what you'll see is that these white gaps, I'll just clear the selection, between the panels pretty much disappear. You're seeing where the handles are visible there. This is something that's you know, fairly standard, but 
depending on the carpentry that's used, it's also important to have these further settings. So I'd gone with uh, flush mount directly onto the carcass, but we can also flush mount into the face frame and we can also surface mount onto the face frame itself. So depending on the, the setup we've used, if I change again, hit OK, you should see now there's lots more white gaps up here because the doors are actually fitted into the frame of the units themselves and depending on the size that we choose and the setup that we have for the doors and the panels and everything else then we can control that in more or less detail depending on what we require. So I've got a different example here, it's something nice and, and hideous that you're not going to find every day but it's just to show a number of the units or a number of the objects that have been used to put together something a little bit different. So again if I go for 3D this is quite useful to see what's going on. So these are now not cabinets. All I've actually got here, if I go underneath and select, is one dirty big solid slab that represents the mass, the shape, the bulk of the, the space I'm going to work with. And then on top I have just a, a 40mm, maybe, 40mm thick different slab to give me my countertop. And into that I've placed the cooker top and the sink and the taps and then the quick solid element operations to be able to to cut this so that we have empty sinks and not fill the slabs etc. So I don't know how practical it is to have a set of drawers directly <laughs> perpendicular to a cupboard but again as I say it's just to show off these different types of units etc. So here we have a set of bifolding doors around the corner here we have a set of drawers and what I'm doing is just facing these objects onto an existing shape so that I'm able to build up and show detail of units that are in there. Try not to spin around too much because it doesn't broadcast particularly well but here you can see I've also gone for a massive curved door. Those can be split into a couple of doors and made a bit smaller to work with in different ways. We have convex, concave, depending on the shape we want. We have sliding doors, double doors, single doors, whatever shape we need just to build up the particular units that we need. Final example to look at is just a quick bathroom plan and here I've gone this time for just a, a range of, of cabinets. In this case it's one physical unit but what I'm able to do with this unit, if I look at the shape, is set out a number of modules. So here we have a total length, here we have a module size. Alternatively rather than working with the module width we could set it to a particular number and we could say I want five modules and what it'll do is then change the shape and break it down into whatever number are actually required there so typically we'd work with a particular size so we set the height, the depth, the overhang at the back of the cabinet to allow pipes, fittings etc to be fitted um, and then it's a case of going through the various different sizes and settings to configure this to what we need. One of the other things I've done with this unit is add the counter stops at the back and I've actually extended them around the edges by 150 mil or so just to again show that we can actually do this sort of stuff. You have full control over the materials, I should have pointed that out at the beginning to not worry too much about the hideous colours and things I've chosen. I tend to pick these things just for contrast so you can actually see what's going on but you can also see if you spend a little bit of time on this, if I zoom in closely you can see the grain of the wood actually follows the joinery as you'd expect it to appear. But if I now switch pace and go and look at door styles, what I've got here is a plan view and you can see there's a whole bunch of, of different cabinets. These ones I've highlighted at the bottom, I'll come onto them separately once we, we're going to take a look at the elevations etc. But this is just to give you an idea of the range of door styles that are available. So there we are in elevation, you can see we can go from very very simple plain doors, we can then have beveled edges or uh, chamfered edges, we then have various different options, if I just pick one of them, look at the settings, look at the doors, this is a range of panel types available, so tongue and groove, louvers, vertical grooves, horizontal grooves, etc, etc, and if I scroll through, you can see how many different options there are, but the really important one is actually the one at the very bottom, and that gives me the option to apply a custom component, so it doesn't matter what panel we want to use, we can also add a custom component to create our own. So that should give you a little bit of a taster. The ones that were highlighted 
back in the plan view are actually these ones across the bottom because what we can also do is customise any of these ones with the, the glaze panels and we can do things like turn the doors off completely we can then add millions and transoms on different types of grids, diamond shapes or prairie style as they're called at the end here so we can really add as much detail as we need to the joinery is also visible in 3D so if I just pick this cabinet here you can see the various different bits of cutouts etc that are applied inside the section through this particular door unit. If I also go into the settings and change the set out, so change the mounting for the door, you can see again the joinery changes and updates to show what's actually happened. And again I've gone for as simple materials as possible just to show off the shapes etc but we have full control, we can have independent colours within the panels and on the edges and the boundaries etc. I've gone for separate colours on the kick plates, I've gone for uniform colours on all the worktops but again these can all be changed, we can actually have different facing edges to the worktops, to the worktop itself and you get tons of control over how the whole thing appears. Last bit to take a quick look at was just the handles. So again, if we take a look at elevation, these are just fairly standard sizes out of the boxes, so these can all be tweaked and adjusted, angled differently, whatever we want to do with them. So we can have no handles at all, we can have various different round shapes, profiles, um, bars, there's rods, there's D-shapes. If I have a look at 3D in a second, you'll see more of what's going on there. And then there's also this option here to have just a, a lip that we can use to open the door with, rather than an actual handle itself. So in 3D you get a bit more idea of what's actually going on in there. So that's a little bit of a taster of the range of different types of things we can do with cabinets. What I'm going to